I'm Vishaka Mysore. I'm on the same team as Sujay, Krishna, and Deepak, um, also working on Crossbook Network Controller. Um, I'm going to continue with a couple of SR, SRV6 related innovations that we've, um, that actually Christian demoed already, but I do want to talk a little bit about SRV6 and kind of hyperscale and what we're doing there. And then Sujay is going to go ahead with the demo. Um, first off, I do want to talk about how we're seeing a lot of customers migrating to SR and the reasons for that. So we've seen SR's ability to tackle, uh, excellent, this slide, okay. We've seen SR's ability to tackle massive scale uh, to achieve network simplicity and for operational ease. And in the operational ease part, we saw what Christian demoed with CNC, and that's really kind of the key to a lot of adoption that we're seeing so far. Um, SR also delivers network resiliency with their uh, TI LFA 50 millisecond uh, convergence, which is great, and that's carried over to SRV6 as well. Um, many service providers we've seen, and I saw that there was a question if this is aimed at a lot of service providers. Um, we've seen a lot of adoption mostly from service providers for both SR and SRV6. In fact, there's in a, a very interesting use case where there's a customer that's moved directly to SRV6 from RSVP. And that's something that we've seen is very common for the region that they're in as well. Uh, we also see that SR offers a lot of rich traffic engineering capabilities. Again, Deepa, uh, sorry, Christian showed us a lot of those, which is low latency, your disjointness, um, your bandwidth optimization. We didn't touch on bandwidth optimization, but that's one of the uh, super uh, interesting use cases that we've seen where you can optimize your um, network OPEX and you don't have to keep upgrading it like, like Christian said. So. Um, there's been fast-paced adoption of both, of uh, SRMPLS and SRV6. We've seen um, in the last two years, especially SRMPLS take off a lot. SRV6 specifically is taking off in APJC. We've seen a lot of customers there. Um, again, this time enterprise customers adopt a lot of SRV6. Um, and it's, 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 it's a no-brainer. In terms of simplicity, it eliminates the MPLS part, it, and of course, MPLS eliminates a lot of the legacy protocols, so that carries over to SRV6 as well. As I mentioned, SRV6 also has a TI-LFA coverage, and there's a lot more advanced traffic engineering use cases with SRV6. So for example, there's the flex algorithms, which again, through NSO with CNC, you can provision that into your network based on the definitions that make sense for your business. Um, that comes in as well. We have multiple optimization needs um, uh, based on specific application needs. And one super cool thing about SRV6, it does take advantage of the IPv6 extension headers, which means there's a lot more space um, to enforce traffic actions on the applications along the route that the applications take. Um, so that's a little bit about SR and PLS and SRV6. And I wanted to talk about this because I want to talk about, next slide please, Deepak. Um, the innovations that we're doing, one, right, the innovations that we're doing with both SR and SRV6 and kind of what it um, unlocks on the simplicity on the automation side. So we've seen network visualization. Um, when you start to adopt SR and SRV6, um, the next question that comes up is, okay, I have scale, I have reachability. How do I do management of my network? How do I manage all of these VPNs, all of these services? Um, how do I visualize my whole topology? And you saw a little bit of that with what Christian uh, demoed, and you'll see a lot more with what Sujay is going to demo. But there's a lot of network visualization aspects, not just your topology, but also the VPN, um, the VPN details, your transport details, your historical information, which is something big that we're working on um, with going back in time and seeing what happened to your network. And that kind of ties into internet-based automation steering a little later, and I'll talk about that as well. Of course, we have um, traffic engineering, advanced TE with your uh, low latency paths, your um, metric bound paths, IGP TE, all of those paths that you can compute with the PCE. You can provision either with the PCE or with your NSO. And again, so if you have an NSO already, which most of our customers do, it's a great product, you can have CNC on top of it and kind of um, mesh this workflow together. We, of course, have disjoint constraints, affinity constraints as well. And then augmented, um, um, augmenting this, we have our flex algorithms, um, which combine, kind of give you simplicity, kind of give you scale, customization, all of those great things. Um, Intent-based automated steering is something that I do want to talk about. And I'm going to kind of um, uh, tie it back to your network visualization and simplicity. So what we do with intent-based automation is there's always an intent that the user provisions within the network. So let's say the simplest example, right? Low la lowest latency path and 
let's say there's some event in the network that happens where your provisioned VPN or your provisioned transport is not on the lowest latency path, um, what PCE and CNC and all of the components within it, what they do is make sure that whenever there's a violation, it's always monitored and the path is automatically rerouted to be on the lowest latency path, or if there's a metric bound, then it's always rerouted to, uh, to be less than that metric bound. Um, so this is something that we do with uh, intent-based automated steering. There's a lot more, uh, it, it gets a lot more complicated than this, but this is just the simplest example with low latency paths. Of course, we uh, can enable network slicing, um, which is an abstraction of the resources above uh, the service level. We also have service awareness and infrastructure visibility with your OAM, um, with SRPM, with telemetry. And I think Christian also mentioned that we do SNMP today. We're working on a lot of uh, open config GNMI uh, compatibility in the future as well. So all of this uh, to say we, we're bringing this in in tandem with both SR and SRV6. And the cool thing about SRV6 this time is that we're bringing it uh, along with the rest of the network. So whenever the network or whenever your Cisco routers uh, come up with any innovations, the automation is ready for you to go. Um, and next slide, please. Okay, so as, so this is where um, all the NSO folks are going to love this. So SRV6, we've, we've seen a lot of feedback from our customers that want to move to SRV6 or um, that we're thinking of moving to SRV6 that the deployment is quite complex for SRV6. So you need to do your IPv6 addressing, your SID allocation, your multi-domain configuration, all of these are day zero things that um, we've seen have hindered a lot of operators from moving to SRV6. And the solution, and I'm going to go one by one. So for, the solution for that is kind of um, using NSO for your day zero config. So um, what we've done, and this is kind of uh, POC right now, but we're working on bringing this under the crosswalk umbrella. What we've done so far is to have all your SRV6 parameters fed into NSO, and NSO kind of understands that as the intent, and provisions and configures all of these and verifies it before, uh, before configuring it onto the network. So it goes in and makes sure that there's no overlap, that your multi-domain configurations are set. So it's kind of a click once and deploy kind of situation with NSO for day zero configs. And that's where Cisco comes in right after your days, oh, sorry, Crossword comes in right after your days zero configs. And you're ready to visualize, you're ready to do service provisioning, you're ready to do your flex algos, you're ready to do your service health monitoring. So it's kind of um, reduce your overall deployment time drastically. And you see a little bit of a um, visualization there, but uh, Sujay is going to show you a little more. I'll focus on is uh, what is, uh, as part of the demo, um, a context of what Christian showed for SRMPLS, but now with SRV6, what is that the SDN controller has to offer? Because the idea is like you want to embrace SRV6 in your networks and, and how operationally that can be simplified with SDN controller like CNC. So with Crosswork, what I would like to showcase demo is some real-time optimization. For example, if there's a, a link down failure, how does the paths optimize? And for SRV6, we look at multiple approaches with VPN services for how VPN services over a VPN v4 network or a VPN v6 network can be provisioned, and how uh, you could provision a layer two VPN, eVPN, VPWS over SRV6. Um, look at the flex algo definition and the node and the link uh, properties. So I'll, I'll switch my screen um, to the demo here. So this is the first part on the um, SRV6 that, that we want to showcase is like um, from the SRV6 perspective, um, every node like as it starts with device inventory and discovery and, and you start provisioning your services, you can, you can look at your uh, SRV6 uh, locators. That is what is configured on the routers for the SRV6. Uh, the IGP domains and the various flex algos uh, that are defined. And, and why flex algo is so important is because it gives that customization within your IGP traffic. Like you could assign that through your prefix sets and, and you could define what is your flex algo groups that you want to create within your network and the device. So for every uh, device, you could look at your flex algo uh, locator information, the locator prefix, and the microSID that are available or configured as part of the network. So this really starts from the device level, like what is configured on the device? Like as, as Vishaka mentioned, like through NSO, you could do through your day zero, day one configs. And once that's provisioned, you could then visualize that on uh, SDN for, for what are the locators that are connected. 
And if you want to look at what are the flex algos that are configured as part of the network for each flex algo, what is the metric that is being used uh, under that specific IGP domains? Um, like for example, flex algo 128, this is using a metric type latency. So for the latency path traffic, I'm using flex algo 128, um, any affinity or elected definitions, the priority. Similarly for flex algo 129, which is using IGP path um, and, and the bottom and the top uh, SID IDs. So what it starts from a device level, you start from device layer, look at the um, SRV6 paths and locations. And what we can now drill down is to provision these services. So as, as part of this demo, I have some pre-canned services that I'm using through NSO to provision these uh, service intent. But what the service intent actually helps you offer is there is a VPN 101 service, which is provisioned over your VPN v4 network. And the VPN v4 network can uh, can use the SRV6 locator that is binding to your network in the service. So I, I can just provision this service and define what is the IPv6 locator that I need to uh, specify. So for example, for here, I'm saying that I need to use a locator name, uh, which is main, which is, which is the locator SRV6 locators that's binding on the interface or, or on the device. And if I look on the device level, this is uh, the device construct. Like I have a, a segment routing locators using locator main and locator latency with the prefixes and, and the micro segment behavior with, with the flex algorithms. So every VPN services using SRV6 will bind to your uh, segment routing SRV6 SIDs that you could define that whether on your locator latency, what is the context if it's provisioned or for your locator main, uh, I have three services. That is one is VPN 101, VPN 602, and a layer two VPN service. So it's really taking the device network information, uh, configuring that through your VPN services and, and provisioning that um, uh, on, on CNC. And likewise, like for in this use case that um, we we can then look forward for, for all the other information. Now, since here, this is using a service 6 directly over locators, we are not using the, the traffic engineering T tunnels, but even that's an option given because SRV6 offers you that flexibility to use that SRV6 locators, which then tries through uh, your flex algo paths. But for example, in this use case, I would like to go ahead and, and provision a, a layer three VPN service, which is, which is using my latency as um, the metric. So if I go ahead and do a latency based provisioning, this is again through APIs, right? Like the construct or the definition is you design once and you deploy multiple times. So I can design my VPN services to use whether VPN v4 network or VPN v6 network, and then reuse that across multiple uh, endpoints uh, for these services. And I can just go ahead and, and create this payload. So this is a predefined payload uh, extracted through your UI, and you could uh, uh, go ahead and, and provision this, provide which uh, locator name that is you want to attach this as part of the service. So as this gets provisioned, we should see that once the network is provisioned, I should see that on the latency, um, I'll have a newer function that is for VPN 603 service that will be binding to this SRV6 locator on the network. Um, so it's, it's as simple as this. Once, once you start creating services, you have your end-to-end -end connectivity uh, provisioned on the network and um, you can start this. So here you see that the VPN 603 attached to an SRV6 locator, which is latency on, on, the, on the device. And uh, I can run some ping tests to find what is, um, what is the, the round trip ping between whether it is using the VPN 603 or the VPN 101, which is the VPN v4 based network. Um, so like for, um, this is on, on the VPN v4 network, which is using the SRV6 head end. And on, on this is on the VPN v6 network, which is using for the IPv6 unicast. So both the ways, the flexibility is available through service provisioning, automation, and, and reusing uh, from, from the device. So moving on to the other components with, with real-time optimization and, and disjoint paths. Like, I know like SRMPLS has its own benefits, SRV6 have their own benefits. But what is interesting to see is how controller actually helps you operationalize or simplify those aspects. So for example, if I were to show you between node five and node four, that we have two disjoint paths um, that are using the top links and the bottom links to, to send the traffic with, with specific entities, with specific metrics on the, on the service. 
And if I were to go ahead and induce a failure in the network, let's say, for example, I would like to go ahead and I'll probably shut down a link between um, the node 7 and 8, which is in this case. Sorry. Um, would you mind coming back to the GUI and showing, uh, could you show the VPN that you just deployed so it can be visualized? Sure. So uh, in this case, like 4129 and 4130 are VPNs, so I can go back to the... It was a 603, if I remember well. Right, that's for SRV6. Okay. Your, uh, you want me to show you the SRV6 one? Okay, yeah. That would be good. Just trying to... Sure. Well, get a capture of it. That's yeah, absolutely. So like, uh, let's go on the crosswork. This is for the VPN uh, 603, um, the SRV6, which is using the IPv6. Brilliant. Network. That's what I needed. Thank you very much. Apologies for the, the segue. It's just no I'm trying just to compare then the output we got before. Sure. The, you push the policy and then what you could after. Yes. Thank you. So this one, yeah. So resuming back on this, on the traffic engineering, uh, how the real-time optimization can be visualized uh, through the services. Let's say if I were to induce a failure between node 7 and 8, how does the path quickly optimize? Because PCE is is monitoring the paths. It will re-optimize the path and send the updates uh, to which and 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 it's it's uh, effectively sending the traffic through a different path. But you will also visualize what the newer path that is being taken here. So let's go ahead and let's see if I were to push a service. So what this should change is like when when you see the path like for the bottom one, which is taking between node seven and eight. If there is a a shutdown between the links on, on 7 and 8 that is happening, it should then start uh, visualizing or, or moving path through a, through a different link or a different state. So, so here if you see that the state has changed because now like the, the no, link between node 7 and 8 has gone down and, and it has optimized to a newer path. So that's, that's what the, the construct or simplification with, with the controllers are. Any network changes, um, you know, if there is bandwidth on demand, if, if there's a bandwidth, it's not available on that particular link to find and re-optimize the path through PCE through a different link or a different state. So what we discuss here is to showcase how SR, SR MPLS, or SRV6 can be, can be simplified through automation and, and the controller brings in those benefits. The other cool part is aspect, I know like um, this is really the, the cool view of, of the segment routing or the traffic engineering policies because customers can have SRMPLS, SRV6 type policies or your tree set policies, which is the newer feature that was that's added in 4.1 for visualizing and and how you could point to multi-point uh, set paths can be visualized through your uh, segment routing policies. And then finally on the RSVPT tunnels. So this really gives you a summary of your T dashboard, like the various uh, bandwidth on demand links, or what paths, what SRMPLS policies have been created through LCM, or what are the metrics that are being uh, used as part of the service, the policies and tunnels. And what is most important is the change events, to understand where have the changes been happened for which policy. Because really, if you imagine that you have routers, networks running from anywhere from 200 to 25,000 devices that, that Christian mentioned, but you could have thousands of SR policies and it really becomes cumbersome when you have to operationalize and see what are the change events, what are the uh, filtering aspects that you need from a controller to visualize um, those change events. And it, it really uh, draw, um, drills down to various head end and policies. What one of the aspects that I can show is the, the newer one that is really cool in this is the preset functionality feature. Because, so with preset, what it does is the segment routing policies configured um, will compute through PCE. The PCE will find out, okay, what are the paths from point to multi-point networks? And, and what are the links that it needs to traverse? So the PCC nodes will, will uh, say these are the paths that they have, and it's a dynamic PC versus a static PC, static, uh, sorry, static presets that are computed from PCE towards the nodes, and the dynamic resets are ones that are computed from the PCC in it, or the root leaf nodes towards the PCE to ask for the computation. So in this use case, where I have a reset path between, um, so this is a, a reset path between node five, which is the root node, and it really tells for the multi-point network in the service, what are the end leaf nodes that it is traversing, and what are the hops that it needs to take, because 
what each path has to offer is is different through its uh, egress and, and link. Like what is the local and remote IP? What is the transit nodes that it pops through? And what is the final leaf node that it needs to traverse? Now, some paths may have a bud node, which is to say, which is next to the leaf in case of a failure, what is the, the bud node will take over the role of the leaf. But in this case, for IGP link state paths, if or, or for the latency, sorry, the latency metric type paths, if there is no path on this um, link, then it may not show up. But the cool feature is on the historical events. This is where we were talking. Like if there are any state changes, any events that are occurring within the network or for a specific policy, that can be visualized through this events. Uh, it will show you, okay, when was the path changed? Like what was the event and what was the path that it was taking for a specific type of a network? Like when the metric type was IGP, what is the preset path that it is uh, taking towards point to multi-point networks? So this uh, event can be saved for up to like, uh, like a month, uh, but this can still be customized if you want to uh, capture or save, but it really drills down to all the nodes and the information that it uh, captures for the service. Like when this event occurred, what was the node count and how many transit route and the bud nodes um, that were available as part of the service. So you can go drill down into each historical event, um, look at those changes, and, and see what paths are, have changed uh, during the course of the time. So in, in short, the, the overall uh, TE summary dashboard is, is really helpful to, to visualize and, and given um, you know, the, the eagle eye view or, a, or the top level view of, of what is happening for your various uh, traffic engineering policies.